Hello. Hi everyone. Uh, you're welcome to. We had a nice time uh, worshiping God because God is awesome and is worthy of our praise. And in the next uh, 15, 10, 15 minutes, I'll be taking us through a very important, it's a very tribal topic, very very jamming topic that I know musicians, especially singers, have been having issues with. You know, um, basic singers, green singers, and I have a lot of questions of you know, how do I sing key? Is it how do I sing to key? In fact, some musicians, or some sorry, when I say musicians, I mean the singers. Some singers have been in a choir, vocal band for years, and frankly, they don't even know the number of keys we have in music or talk less of the key and the singing relationship. But this class is just another point to give us a pointer. So, whatever you have, you're having issues with singing to key, um, uh, getting your key right, or singing to key. This is just a simple basic introduction, and you can hopefully develop yourself from there. Now, the first thing you have to understand as a music student, as a singer, is that one is you must know that music are written and composed in keys. This is very important. Music are written and they are composed in keys. That's why you see when people just uh, when, when, when you have this course sheet, this is more evident in classical music. Classical music are arranged music. You see the keys signature in front of them. Music are what they are written and composing keys. And it's imperative that when we perform this music, when we sing this song, we should try as much as possible. Or we should sing them to keys. Don't even try it. That's the important thing. We should sing them to uh, the keys. And the easiest way to uh, know these keys to like visualize them is um, using the keyboard now you can see the image downwards there um, sorry this image is not the full one but this is just to give you a clue of it so this is like is little graphical illustration on the keyboard and you have uh, the key C and one C D E F G E B in music, we have about 12 keys. So we have 12 keys, not about. We have 12 keys, at least for now. And you can see the keys listed there. These keys are divided into two. You have the natural keys and the accidentals. The natural keys are the ones you have seen they have, uh, written out here, about seven of them C, D, E, F, G, E, B. Now, these are the normal. See uh, natural keys we have, but when you start here, something like a flat, sharp. We are not going in depth, just giving us tips to so that we can you know solve our way through. If you need more, you can contact and who to put you through our music classes. Now we have you know the natural keys. You can see them C D E F. We know that we call them flat or what. Or sharp, that's the way they have been written. That's the keys on the keyboard. The first one uh, beside the C is either we call the C sharp or D flat, and this one is E sharp, uh, sorry, D sharp or E flat. Then we have F sharp or G flat, we have G sharp or E flat, and we have B flat or what or A sharp. Now, those are the keys. When you count everything together, they make up to what up to. 12 keys. Now, it is imperative for musicians and singers to know this. This is the basics of everything we are doing. Keys. Now, when you compose and write your music, you probably write your music in one of these keys. Do you get it? You write your key, your music in one of these keys. Now, a lot of people mistake keys for notes. Uh, is the concept is a bit uh, blurry, but it's still. But when you, uh, the theory there's really, it's not blurry, but for me to explain so that you get it. So 
um, you see, keys can be described as packages. This is just the simplest illustration I use. Now, look at the, the sheet, the mail, uh, the PowerPoint presentation. You can see that these packages, you can see these keys, they are, they are described as packages. Now, you see that these packages, uh, they contain similar things, almost the same thing. But this package, you can see that's why I use different colors for them. Sorry, I'm not very good with color. One is, uh, I think this is uh, cyan, or white, okay, orange, yellow. You can, you can see them, different colors. Now, when you look at in, inside of this package, you can see the same notes. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, C, D, I mean, A sharp, C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, D, D sharp. Now, when you look at this, you see the same notes in each of these packages now. Look at each box, big box, the rectangular box, or is it square, sorry, the rectangular box. Each of them contains, they are what we know as key. Each of those boxes is one key. Now, look at inside those box, you can see what different, these smaller keys, but this time there are no more keys, they are what we call notes. Musical words, notes. You can see the box is a key. The, uh, the, the key is the box, the bigger one, that contains what? The notes. Now, when you look at key, for example, if the blue one is, uh, let's say, key C. Now, inside key C, you can see what? Smaller notes that make up what? Key C. You can see A, B, C, D, E. Same thing. Now, when you look at, let's say, the white box, the white box is, let's say, key F. Now, inside that key here, you have the same words, the same notes inside that key here. But that doesn't mean that key F is the same thing as what? As what? As key C. Do you get the this time now? The key is the larger one that you have the notes. Now, the notes you sing in music, they are, the way they are read, the intervals is what differentiates them. So, inside these notes, the keys... You have the keys, the box. Now, inside those box, we have what we, where, where you put your skills. Do you get it? Where your skills, those your skills, the um, uh, your runs, all those ones. Those are make up. You use the notes for them inside what the key. So, do we get the illustration now? So, I hope you understand what we mean by keys. Now. For example, let, let, let's, let me do a simple illustration. For example, this is key C. Let me sing it. Now let me let me pick another key. Let's say the uh, the green box is key E flat. The same thing. Do re mi fa so fa mi re do 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 re mi fa so fa mi re do. Now, when I was in C, I was probably the blue box. When when I when I play the when I play E flat, I'm not in the green box. You see, but when you when you sing these things, you notice that the pitch in which they are arranged. Pitch is a function of frequency, and the higher you go, the higher your pitch, the higher it is. It goes the keys and everything. So, pitch is a function of those uh, of the frequency. So, but that's all for today. What we're just doing is just to familiarize us with our basic music uh, principles, how to just tame your keys. Now, with this knowledge, let's move to the next, tra next slide. In your ears, train your ears. Your ear, you have to be able to train your ear in such a way that you are able to replicate exactly what you hear with your voice. You have to be able to replicate exactly what you hear with your voice. So I was supposed to let me share you this story. I was supposed to accompany a guest minister to administration, and after the intro and. The, you know, the jammings and the syncopations and everything. When the lead singer was to enter the 
person just enter with another key and come and see the morale and everything just went down as if the world just ended. You know, I've talked with a lot of keyboardists and one of the things, uh, not just keyboardists, you know, musicians, one of the things that brings down the morale of the music that really brings down is when the lead singer or when the choir goes out and when they intentionally or unintentionally or knowingly or I don't know how I'll put it, go out of keys. It is very, very, very strictly. It's not professional at all. It's not nice. You know, when you are playing and at the end of the day, you have to stop and that's what some musicians do, some singers don't understand. Once you, just like the other illustration we used that we said keys are in packages now, it's not, you can't just suddenly jump from the white box into the blue box. No, it doesn't work like that. If somebody, if we are holding the white box, for example, the white box, Sisha, if we are holding the white box, and you just jump from the white box into the yellow box, leaving us all in the white box, then the music piece of music we are singing is no more palatable to the hearing because you're, you in the yellow box, if we, all, if we want to transition, everybody from the blue box should move at the same time to the yellow box. Not that some of us are in the yellow box, why are you you're in the blue box? Do you get? So that's how it works. So, um, the ability to uh, effectively maneuver your ways through keys is very, very important for professional musicians. So, um, these uh, here I said there are two categories of singers. You have one, those having difficulties, you know, singing in the key. They can't even start the song on the key. When you give them a key, they can't even start the song on the key. And two, you have those diff having difficulties staying in the key, you know, with every new song, they pick, uh, they pick up on the different keys. And then they start using six keys and you start asking them, oh, are you the one with the keys of life? So, but it's not to just make you feel bad, but it's a call to hard work. It's a call to effective practice. Practice is what makes perfect. A uh, thing I used to tell people is, uh, and something I've come to um, to in Bible of recent is the culture is that always listening to feedbacks from your musicians, the choir, and maybe some of your uh, the people in the um, the people in the auditorium, the people you are singing to. So always strong to the or and again what you can do is you can always record yourself so self-evaluation a lot of times people shift keys and they don't know they are shifting keys wow that is very very bad that is not good they don't know they are shifting keys but they just move and so shifting of keys from modulations are so obvious that there's really nothing you can do than to stop playing and and you know pick yourself up again so please let us try as much as possible to try and learn to stay in keys. Now I have it here that the ability to hear and sing in the right key is very crucial to the growth and development of a singer. Yeah, if you if you wish to have a if you uh, to wish you have your own partner singing line. Of course we have lots of them around and they keep messing up when it comes to keys. It might even Amazing you have people with platforms still changing keys. What is happening? That is strictly unprofessional. I was I was also opportunity to follow out a very big music administrator of God. Uh, and the way he was singing now, he was just shifting from keys and you know, transitioning with the music and everything. It just it was just wonderful. Just wonderful. We were just picking it and just transitioning and transitioning. And I try my best to model my singing uh, alongside this singing. You can see from the um, from the worship session, you can see I was just trying to move from a key down to another key and still just trying to keep the music on. So when you're able to work with new keys, you are automatically almost 60 percent okay in music even if you don't know the runs you don't know the riffs you don't know the the embellishments and all the slurs and everything but you are able to pick a key 
I stay in that key throughout. Come on, trust me, you are better than 60% of, what, of musicians. So I just picked out little things that I know uh, can help you and can help you, you when you are singing in keys. Uh, when you are singing, if you are not getting your keys right. The first thing is listening. Listen. I think that's the English pronunciation. Listen. A lot of people are too anxious, too in a hurry to start the music. They don't listen to what their musicians are playing, especially the keyboardist. Probably the keyboardist is just setting up and, you know, the music is on and everything is on you. You should listen very well. You should listen. Don't just go into and start singing. And, no, no, no. Listen very well before you sing. Always ensure you listen very well before you sing. Listen, wait for the uh, everybody to get set and wait for your musicians to strike the key for you before you sing. It is very, very, very important. The second one is to stay hydrated. You need to learn to stay hydrated. Your voice is like a machine. Your voice box, your voice apparatus is like a machine. And with every machine, with hard work, producing work, there is always friction. So one of the best ways to ensure the proper smooth working of your voice is what is by staying hydrated. If you lack the habit of staying hydrated before you sing, you are number one, you are destroying your voice. And again, you are changing because at the end of the day, you won't be able to pick it. Even if your ears is getting the right thing, your voice will be saying another thing. It will be ash, will be coerced, and it might not be tuned again. So please, always ensure you stay hydrated anytime you want to sing. Then the, I'm picking it one by one. The next one is rest. Rest, it is very essential. It's very essential, especially before you. It's advisable before you sing, before you perform. You need to rest very well. You need to rest, vocal rest, you need to rest because fatigue can work on your voice and you just see you are singing, um, you're not really singing to key and that's why you see you're not really singing to key. When, you, when you're stressed, you have to work your voice. Always learn to rest your voice. Another one here is what you have to exercise and the best way to exercise your voice is to do vocal warm-ups. Vocal warm-ups vocal warm-ups. You must learn to exercise your voice. What you don't work on, what you don't use will not get better. It's not by magic. What you don't use, it won't get better. You just have to exercise your voice by, you know, there are lots of vocal warm-ups. I'll be playing some and I'll be sharing some later here. This is what we are here to do to just help you improve. That's the best thing you have to watch. Exercise your voice. You can pick any song, any any song you know that is technical. Try your best and match along with it. Match it with your as you listen to it, try and reproduce it with your voice. You can look for a song that has um that has all this um inflation. Oh, I would I would uh I would recommend PJ Martin. If you if you can just look at look him up, PJ Martin. It does all this kind of this, and uh, I think it's an Arabic news. Hello. So um, you have to reproduce uh, their sound and try. Another thing here is the vocal range. The vocal range is just the extent at which your vocal power, your voice box, can carry you when it comes to music. You know, you have to know how many octaves you can eat. A lot of people. Uh, the, just because they feel singing high or singing loud is uh, equals to singing good. No, that is that is no. Loudness does not equal singing good or their uh, professionality. No, no, no. A lot of people they they over they go above their vocal range. That's why you see they keep having uh, issues staying in the key. Because the more they push their voice, the more out of key they go. 
So you must understand your vocal range. You must understand your vocal range. Every musician, should, every singer should be able to understand, know your vocal range. So when you know your vocal range, you will know that, oh, at this level, if anything at this level, I'm no more producing music, but I'm screaming. And when you start screaming, it's an indication that you are likely out of key or you are about to go off key. So you have to know your vocal range. People, you have to know your vocal range. Um, and also, not just doing your vocal range, so that you have dexterity and freedom, you have to be able to work on your vocal range and extend your vocal range. For example, uh, knowing your vocal range, you can just speak up, you know, just speak up, let's say, from the first key on this keyboard. This is like a five octave small keyboard. in my voice but this is this is like the roof of my voice here yeah. so anything i go out of here i'm more likely to go out of key i'm more likely to go out of key anything aside from here so what do i do i effectively manage my singing what all my readings everything i manage myself within what my vocal what my range so i know at this point in this convenient region i'm not gonna go off even matter how much i how loud i become or the slow and everything, I'm not going to go out of it because this is my confident vocal range and that is what you must do. Ah, I didn't mention about knowing your vocal key here because uh, uh, I don't really like limiting or restricting people to a particular key, although there are people that sing on a particular key, but if for a professional musician, you must be able to work. If you know your vocal range very well and you can undo your vocal types, your vocal that you have your chest voice, your head voice, and your head, uh, your chest voice, your middle voice, and your head voice, and your falsetto. If you can manage them very well, then you don't have a problem singing on any key or on a key or something. You'll be able to just know that, come on, on this key, I know I can eat it on this key with my chest voice. What do I do? I go to my head voice. I run it. But you can also move around with your keyboard so they know the perfect key for you in which you're singing. But I don't like restricting people. The goal for a musician or a singer is to be able to sing perfectly on all what? On all keys. Very well. So, um, the next slide is you have to practice so far melodies. So far melodies, these are very this is very, very, very crucial. Very, very crucial. You must know your what? Your so far what? Your so far melodies. Now you know, when we, uh, sulfurs are a way of representing our sound. So you get, sulfurs are a way of representing what? our sound. You have do re mi fa so la ti do ti la so fa mi re do. That is beside the ascendentals and so on. You must be able to what? To practice sulfur notes. In fact, all your vocal warm-ups, they are written up in sulfur notes. There are things you can just sit down, walk out and run it and just sing it while what? What you prepare for your ministrations. For example, I put about two here. They are just simple things I just sat down with and I use in training people just to understand their keys. By the time you do this about two, twice a day for a week or two, you surely know that come on. At least you are better off than you where you started from. So let's do this in the key of B flat. Take it, you can do it 
without a keyboard, just do it on your own. Do, 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 mi, re, do, mi, mi, fa, mi, mi, fa, so, fa, mi, so, so, la, so, so, la, ti, la, so. There you go. You can even take it up from every day. Then let's do a tune. I am. to 
sing out this interval so that when you modulate, you'll be able to get them very well. I don't want to do much on them. But, but when you are singing a minor second, let's say an half step, minor second as an hour interval. Yeah, a minor second. So one of the ways of uh, practicing this modulation is you have to first, uh, you can do your half step modulation. You must be able to hear the pilot chords. You know, when the keyboard is playing, you must be able to learn the pilot chords. The pilot chords, they are movement chords. They are chords that are moving from one place to another. You have to learn your pilot chords. The chords are moving from one place. For example, in this scene, I'm going like the music is in like. to pilot myself from what from this initial key to the other uh, to the other key is uh, of course um, as a professional you should be able to modulate directly but if you don't you can take baby steps get uh, if you need a playlist for piloting you can DM and will give you a playlist for piloting so you can easily use it to learn it on all keys with a form one team and I'm going for a minor second I can do Just when you notice that, just tell the 
engineer to similar to the engineer to bring your musicians up or they give you a monitor so you can hear them better now learn to switch between your voice types i already said that sometimes people complain the key is too high the key is too high yeah i know the key might be the pitch might be too high for you to pick but you are also stressing yourself by using your head voice when you know the pitch is high the best thing you do is what you come down to your mid voice or your chest voice and you try and pick it up from there that's the best thing to do if you are screaming and your head voice is like screaming then come down to your chest voice and you see you'll be okay you'll be okay it's not compulsory you start screaming and screaming 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 no 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 you can come down to your chest voice and be okay then now the last one avoid screaming and shouting when performing there's a difference between music and noise when you are screaming without music you can't that's not that's screaming is not a vocal type shouting is not a vocal type screaming is not a vocal type when then you start your voice start is going and screeching and you are screaming that's when you start moving out and you start going off key i hope that you have been uh blessed by this uh teaching join us for another awesome time um i'm jakey's and i'd like to hear from you and I'd like to continue saying you join our page, like and subscribe, Piano Shared Entertainment Blog on Facebook, and also Piano Shared with JKs on YouTube. Please like and subscribe and share our videos. Thank you. Remember that poor performance is your go-to. That poor reality is go-to poor performance. So just, just have to keep rehearsing and getting better because that's what God has called us into as musicians. You have to give God the sacrifice that is worth it. And you have to give him the sacrifice of your time, the sacrifice of your voice. He said, David said, I'm not going to give up to God that which that cost me nothing. And it's going to cost singing rights. It's not easy. It's not easy, but we're going to decide. We are going to make it. And we are going to be better. And we're going to be good. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys. Thank you.